Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So uh, Fiona uh, Moriarty McLaughlin, I believe is how uh, what her name is, um, a young woman is wanting to distinguish herself, trying to show herself uh, as somebody who's very active, and she's working hard to to promote herself. But unfortunately, she's a product, you know, the negative product of of society. So the poor girl goes out and does this and but unfortunately somebody was there videotaping her and she staged the photo in which she was uh, pretending to help board up uh, a business with an individual to protect the business but then she said thank you very much and she says something about Instagram Instagram is a huge problem with this right that the whole nature of the product is to convince people to put up photos and to stand out you have to shamelessly promote yourself and posing and staging all of these things oh i just got out of bed and it looks so pretty right so we we know that this stuff is is going on but this girl is just a product of, the, of this upbringing right these young individuals and the reason this struck me is you have individuals like lebron james and pink i understand their frustration i like when i saw it i was like oh my god it's a lot of these these like what is going on like how, you know but then I stepped back and I started thinking you know what the, the, you got two individuals who had an opportunity to teach this young girl said look at you know what what you did was wrong you, you, if you had if she'd stayed for five or ten minutes even you know it's not ideal but if she could have stayed for five or ten minutes helped the poor guy put up some um, some boards or something then then at least the, 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 it wouldn't have been a stage photo. but it would have been legitimate she actually helped and so on and then there was a promotion and, but you get LeBron James who's just like disgusted with it. And, and here's the problem. He's going to say this and Pink said this and Pink was much more harsh. I forget exactly what she said but something about this privileged a-hole or something like that. And this poor girl, I'm afraid that the next time I'm going to hear about this, this young woman's name is her obituary because it's this, like literally this, this woman is going to be shamed for the rest of her life. All right, you know, 10 years from now, she's gonna think that she's past this and she's gonna walk somewhere, to, hey, you're that girl that did that thing back in 2020, right? And, and that's what's going to happen. And we have such an unforgiving society right now that I just, I, I'm male to protect her and guide her and, but her life is over. She's had to like, she's gonna have to go into hiding and, and just because we just, this cancel society, these, you know, the cancel culture and all of these, these things, these stupid, ridiculous, unforgiving society that we live in, right? Um, we're, we're going through it right now with all the, the Black Lives Matters in the States. I mean, there, there's so many people that are unforgiving with the police and they just assume that every single police officer out there is some violent thug waiting to abuse some minority. Right. And, and you look at the news and you have the Democratic news agencies extremely biased, showing only the peaceful protests. And then you go to the Republican side and all they're showing is the horrible rioters and they're and they're conflating both. The fact is that you have a lot of ugly, disgusting, vile individuals in the United States and all around the world. You have a lot of ugly, disgusting, vile police officers who should not be police officers in all countries around the world, but you have some serious, sincere police officers who want to protect and, and emotions are so high, you are going to find individuals who are normally great police officers and because of everything that's going on, because they're seeing complete strangers attack one of their fellow officers, they're going to get upset and they're going to respond in a negative way. And I have anger issues, okay, I struggle with this. I'm not a bad person, but all it takes is one time for me to give in to my anger, it's just out of frustration, and something horrible can happen, and that's it. That's it. I'm done. And, and that's what's happening right now, right? So this poor girl made a bad call, and Pink and LeBron James, they made bad calls. They, like, because I guarantee you that LeBron James and Pink are not going to filter through their millions of responses and say, look it, she was dumb, she made a bad choice, let's teach her a lesson so she can be a better person. Another example, which would have been great, was, again, product of society, and this mentality of, of self-interest. The, I don't know where she was, Washington Inquirer, or the Washington Post, I forget, they should not have fired her. And they should hire her back 
right away. Why? Because that is the opportunity to teach this young woman, look it, you made a mistake, now you are going to have to earn back the respect that you've lost. And to do that, we are going to keep you on. We don't agree with what you did, but we're not going to fire you. Because in her case, she's a young girl, naive about the world, she doesn't know what's going on, and again, product of society. So. Like, as usual, we're all guilty in some way or another. My children, I am trying to teach my children to be Muslim in a Western world where the stuff that I hear, my son and his friends and the way they talk and, and they say things because they love rap music and they say things that I find disgusting and vile and racist, but because they listen to this type of music and I try as a Muslim I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this right my, my children were growing up they were not born Muslim so I'm not gonna get into the whole music and Muslim issue but just go with me here for a second but the idea is that they listen to this stuff and they're bombarded with this particular word that is said repeatedly in this music and the degradation of women in this music and they just talk like they're hearing and they don't realize the impact, right? And I'm not trying to say that, that black people are bad for making rap music and white people are bad for making country music. I mean, people might argue that anyway, <laughs> your personal taste. But I hope you understand that young people, because I'm older, I've gone through it, and I understand how you can be influenced in these ways, and we forget that. And so this is one of the reasons why I accept Islam. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is, do I think rap music is bad? Yes, I do. I think it's very horrible for our society, but we allow it. Why? Because it makes money. We, we don't care about the impact of teaching young people to speak in ways that are derogatory to other people. And I'm not saying just rap music, you have it in all music, pop music, the songs that you hear of all of these so-called celebrities and musicians that everybody worships. These are just human beings. LeBron James is just a human being. He's not special. He's not special. What has he done for society? Right? And I'm not trying to cut into him, I'm just trying to put things into perspective. He's a human being that provides entertainment because he is good at a game. You know who's a hero to me? The plumber who fixed my uh, plumbing that didn't destroy my home. LeBron James has done nothing for me. I'm not into basketball, but you, but you understand my point. But he's a human being, so I treat him with respect. Alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah, he's lucky and he's got a job where he can make an obscene amount of money playing a game. But he's not deser deserving of idol worship. He's not this pink, is not some idol that should be people just go, ah, LeBron James, got, dude, come over and have a barbecue at my house. And... Uh, chill in Canada, right? Like, that's it. You know, I'll talk to you about my religion, my belief in that. Like, that's it. I mean, I show the guy respect. But I'm not going to treat him and roll out some red carpet. He's just a person. He's like my neighbor is is more of a hero and, a, you know, is somebody that's important to me. Do you, do you understand what I'm getting at? And we forget these things. Um, I hope that comes across clear because I'm not talking about degrading. As a Muslim, I think that we, I believe, and I truly believe we've gone way too far with, with forms of entertainment, comedy and movies and television. We've gone way too far. And we just, we, we go to extremes for the sake of the money. We don't care of the impact of teaching people. I don't know. You got a challenge ahead of you, kid. <laughs> Subhanallah. Like, Oh, hindsight. Oh my God. Like I just, I cannot imagine what this poor kid is going through right now. And you know, the fact that she's had to shut down Twitter and Instagram and just hide from the world, lost her double look like, like, think about it. Think about it. Think about this. And, and we are going to contribute to this and continue to, she, 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 she abused the situation. And our response is to abuse her to a level that it's just, ah, oh, subhanAllah, it just, it's freaking me out, just think, I can't imagine. I've had, I got a YouTube channel, like, this is the one that's, that's that I'm on now, is and, and it's like 5,000 plus subscribers, I got half a million views, and this is from years ago, because I keep up and down, and, and that's because I have a hard time dealing with how I should do my channel, and I'm really, really conscious of trying not to fall into this trap where you are going to shameless promotion. 
But these young people, they don't get it. The American way, right? Do whatever you can do to become rich and famous. Who cares who you hurt? Who cares who you, the compromises you make in your moral and your ethics? As long as you're famous on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, that's what's important. And this is the message that everybody's getting. So, subhanAllah. I want to be popular on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and have millions of views. Why? Because I want to help people. But I do understand, even in the little tiny bit, the challenge that you would face. It's, I get a little bit of attention because of my channel and Shaitan goes overdrive. I can't imagine what it's like for these young people who are getting millions and millions of views. The attention, it makes you feel this way. Fousey Tube, I guess. I never really watched him, but he only caught my attention when he was famous and all of a sudden he rejected Islam and was suffering from depression. Right? And then I looked at some of his past videos and I said, well, I see why he's depressed. Because he was going to an extreme doing things he should not do for the sake of views, likes, shares, clicks, because there was profit in it, right? Now how profitable is it? I, I don't know where he is now. I don't know if he's, you know, may Allah protect him and, and guide him. And I don't know if he came back to Islam. I don't know. I hope Allah gives him, you know, the support that he needs for whatever he's suffering through in terms of depression. This is the way I believe that we should be. This is how Islam is, right? Forgive, compromise and forgive, right? You find a compromise with that individual. You screwed up, you're gonna be on probation, but you're not gonna lose your job. This is your warning. That's how it's supposed to be. They don't wanna look bad, so they fired her. That's why they got rid of her. Guaranteed, they got rid of her, right? I shouldn't say guaranteed, but it's a really strong possibility in the world that we live in. She lost her job because it looks bad on them, and they don't care to help this poor young girl and teach her so that she can be a better person. Allah, thank you for giving me Islam and showing me this is how we're supposed to be. And it's not arrogance, it's you have to have a system of life that's going to help you to be a better person. And that's what Islam is to me. I have not seen anybody showing me any way of life that compares to Islam that gives the benefit of Islam in terms of Mankind, womankind, politically correct. I'm not into that politically correct stuff, so you're gonna see me use a lot of stuff. I believe there's a difference, and we'll get into that stuff later, because that'll be fun. <laughs> okay, everybody stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.